Honey, you picked the wrong time to get a drink. They say war never changes, but if that's true, nobody told Fallout 76. Following a rough launch played by bugs, server issues, and a generally lackluster game, Bethesda has, to its credit, not given up. The free Wastelanders update has brought new story content and much needed features like NPCs in an effort to revive the struggling game. As a result, Fallout 76 is starting to feel like a true Fallout game, even if it's still not as consistently enjoyable as its predecessors. Wastelander's believable and intriguing story jumps forward one year and focuses on the sudden repopulation of Appalachia, after rumors of a hidden cache of valuable lost treasure start to spread. On top of that, you got to distribute a scorched plague vaccine and convince the new raider and settler factions to work with you. In concept, Wastelanders has an interesting format for an expansion to a persistent online world. Rather than segmenting content and delineating between new and old quests, Wastelanders' new additions are organically threaded throughout the world, fundamentally changing what Fallout 76 is. It feels seamlessly integrated, even if you're dusting off a mid-level character from just after launch. Although it can be annoying that there is no indication of whether or not a quest is new or old, other than if it includes a human NPC or not. What? They're... those things now? Jesus. However, playing as a brand new character does have some weird quirks. For starters, lots of the best and most interesting dialogue hinges entirely on your special stats, and in many cases require far higher stats than you would realistically have early on in the game. If you're starting new and going directly into Wastelander's story, eventually you'll also hit a point where Fallout 76 requires you to be at least level 20 before going any further. This means you'll be forced to step off of the Wastelander's path and run into the base game's countless optional fetch quests left behind letters and holotape recordings. Those are hard to go back to after interacting with the much more compelling human NPCs in the Wastelander story. Visually, Wastelanders makes some improvements to the Wasteland, but overall it still basically looks like Fallout 4, which didn't even really look that cutting edge itself back in 2015. The lighting system is nicer now and colors pop a bit more, but there are some quirky new shadow bugs too. While the introduction of actual human characters is definitely an upgrade over the faceless robots we've seen since launch, Wastelanders NPCs are generally a bit awkward with low quality voice acting. You're not Crane. What the hell's going on here? You'll spot an NPC just sort of standing around since they usually have nowhere to be and nothing to do. They're just kind of vending machines with faces. You can even flagrantly steal any items you want in full view of any NPC, even from their shops or homes, or even shoot them, and they don't even blink. It flies in the face of the living, reactive worlds that Bethesda RPGs usually have. And unfortunately, the new ally NPCs don't follow you around on actual missions like Fallout fans would expect. Instead, once you complete a series of side quests for them, they just live at your camp and offer you recurring missions. It's a bummer not getting to go questing with them, but at least their presence does help make your camp feel a little less lonely. I'll try not to get in your way. That being said, many of the new quests themselves are extremely well written and entertaining, reveling some of the best from any Bethesda game that I've played in terms of storytelling. One standout moment comes when you have to track down a demolitions expert named Lucky Lou. The path to reach him is full of tiny story details and actually coming face to face with Lucky Lou at the end and talking about what you saw along the way rather than reading more notes is precisely the kind of depth that was missing from Fallout 76 before this update. It's aggravating though that playing these story quests multiplayer is so awkward in what is supposed to be a multiplayer Fallout game. When you enter as a team you get two options. Everyone goes in solo, playing through their own instance versions of the quests, or you can accompany your team leader and watch them have conversations and make decisions without getting any other credit for completing the mission yourself. It's baffling that you can't progress the quest together. In terms of the amount of new content Wastelanders adds to Fallout 76 roughly 50 hour pile, your mileage will vary depending on what you like to do and how high level you are. Not to mention the new in-game content like raiding, Vault 79, daily tasks, and events, but if you only care about the new main story content, it's maybe 10 hours for a beefed up in-game ready character and probably double or even triple that if you're brand new. We're gonna find my Barnabun, maybe we'll also find a gun. At the very least, Wastelanders solidifies Fallout 76 as something that's worth recommending to series fans who are also interested in multiplayer. The new storyline is great and NPCs add some much needed personality to the world, but consistency issues and a baffling quest progression design choice hold it back from standing shoulder to shoulder with its predecessors. For more on Fallout 76, watch our video on whether or not you should return and see the first 32 minutes of Wastelanders gameplay right here. And for everything else, stick with IGN.